This video is sponsored by Motion Elements. It took some time to really cleanse my perspective of how to approach the story. I realize now that I've spent most of my life and my career compromising my perspective in order to fit in. This is a quote from Lulu Wang, director of The Farewell, a film which, on the surface, appears to be a narratively complex story to tell. It follows a large family of characters, each with their own values, motivations and opinions, and how best to come to terms with learning that their grandmother, Nai Nai, only has a short amount of time left to live without telling her about her own critical medical condition. So what is the best perspective to visually represent such a complex, energetic, subtle and nuanced story? For Wang and cinematographer Anna Franqueza Solano, the answer was surprisingly easy. Keep things simple, clean and minimal. In this video, I'll break down some foundational rules of composition, analyze how the filmmakers arrived at their perspective for covering scenes in The Farewell, and go over specific examples of how they framed shots to tell the story. In order to break down how shots are framed, we first need to be familiar with established rules and photographic concepts for composing a frame. These compositional guidelines are not specific to cinematography and can be applied to any visual art form, from painting to still photography. Perhaps the most important of these compositional rules of thumb is the rule of thirds. This framing guideline is so standard that it's often featured as an overlay in many cameras. The rule of thirds proposes that an image should be divided into nine parts by two equally spaced vertical lines and two equally spaced horizontal lines. So the image is divided into three segments of vertical space and three segments of horizontal space. Important elements in the frame should then be placed along these lines or where the lines intersect with each other. For example, an element such as the horizon is typically placed on either the upper or lower horizontal line. Individual characters are often framed on vertical lines. Cinematographers can also place important elements within whole segments of a third. For example, covering two of the vertical chunks with foreground, while one vertical segment shows the background. Another compositional concept is the idea of negative and positive space. Positive space is the subject, for example, a character on screen. Negative space is the area around the subject that is not the audience focus, which gives the eye space to rest. Most frames include a balance of both negative and positive space. Balance in an image creates a psychological sensation of stability and centeredness. One way this balance of space is used is with headroom, the distance between the subject's head and the top of the frame. Classical, neutral headroom is framed with the top of the head within the upper third of the image. However, cinematographers often disturb this balance for a distorted, emotional effect. Giving large amounts of headroom, for example, can make the audience feel unsettled, while chopping off the top of the head can create a feeling of claustrophobia. So while the vertical framing of a character can affect the audience's subconscious, so can the horizontal framing. This is called nose room or breathing room. Composing a character on one side of a frame so that they have lots of negative space or room to breathe usually creates a sense of ease. Flipping this convention by framing characters so that they face the edge of frame with little nose room creates a subconscious claustrophobic feeling that their room to move is limited. The angled placement of the camera is another compositional consideration. DOPs can either shoot a subject front on or at an angle, all the way up to framing them in profile. Front-on framing tends to be more theatrical, like the camera is in the audience of a stage play, while angled framing is generally considered more traditionally cinematic. Front-on framing is useful in creating symmetrical compositions, where elements in a frame are equally balanced on each side. This kind of framing generally appears staged and deliberate. Finally, a technique which is frequently used in composition is that of leading lines. This is where straight lines, usually at an angle, lead the eye towards a central focal point. For example, the camera could be placed so that a line which starts in the foreground 
connects with a character further in the background of a shot. This brings visual attention to that character. It's important to note that none of these rules are set in stone. They are merely guidelines which have been historically frequently used in art to create what is perceived as visually appealing composition. As is the case whenever DPs create images, certain rules can either be applied, used sparingly, or even disregarded. This video is sponsored by Motion Elements. If you're an editor or video maker and require post-production content that will simplify your workflow and enhance your films, Motion Elements is a great place to go. Motion Elements provides an extensive range of media content, such as templates for Premiere Pro, After Effects, Final Cut, and DaVinci Resolve, as well as stock footage, music, SFX, and images. The licensing process is super simple and inclusive. You just download the files and can use them forever, save for commercial use across all media. I personally used elements from their site to help edit this video. Having access to their templates helps speed up time intensive post work for one affordable subscription fee. For less than $17 a month on a yearly plan, Motion Elements' unlimited download subscription provides you with access to over 3 million pieces of content for all your post-production needs. To boost the quality of your videos and simplify your workflow, you can subscribe to Motion Elements by visiting the link in the description. Due to time and budget restraints, Wang was faced with two options for shooting the film. She could either attempt to get traditional coverage, where a scene is shot conventionally, using a variety of wide, medium and close-up shots, which are then played around with in the edit. Or she could shoot what she termed the ambitious version, where each scene was precisely shot from sparse, specific angles, as it would be edited in post. To cover 13 people in the wide, and the medium, and the close-up, that would take a lot of time. So we couldn't do the safe version. We had to have one version of the film, the cinematic version, the ambitious version. We could either do that, or we could do coverage. There was no way we could do coverage as a safety net. We had no safety net. So we came up with a cinematic language, and we just went with it. In deciding on a visual language for the film, Wang and Solano decided to represent their subjects both as a family monolith and as individuals. We came across this idea of shooting the family as you shoot a landscape, because that's what it was, a landscape of a family. Just as a landscape is composed of individual, natural elements, so too was the family composed of individual characters. Often the camera favours a wider frame, such as a wide or medium shot, where multiple characters can be squeezed in. They'd use close-ups sparingly for very specific, personal moments where they wanted to emphasize an emotional point. The film revolves around family unity that led us to take an objective approach to the visual language. It called for a wide aspect ratio that could include as many family members as possible in the frame, even though we still had to feel that the protagonist, Billy, is the one who takes us through this journey. It was a delicate balance. This meant opting for a wider 2.35 to 1 aspect ratio which has more lateral room in the frame for including more people without having loads of headroom. Solano was faced with a choice of either shooting with anamorphic lenses or shooting with spherical glass and cropping the top and bottom of the image to the widescreen aspect ratio. In our first conversations, we considered using anamorphic lenses in order to achieve a wide aspect ratio and be able to include as many family members as possible in the frame. We went with spherical because we wanted to have the freedom to fill the frame as much as we wanted without having distracting distortions or a limited depth of field that would restrict the blocking. This practical decision to shoot spherically led her to pair an Alexa Mini with Ari Zeiss Master Primes. Unlike anamorphic lenses, Master Primes are sharp across the entire frame with minimal distortion on wider lenses and the ability to focus on characters nearer the lens. The visual language which they implemented in the framing came out of the story, which involves the entire family lying to Nainai about her deteriorating health. 
This family is performing for the sake of Nainai. They're performing a wedding. They're performing joy. So we wanted the frame to set a stage for them to do their performing on. This meant that the frames themselves had to appear theatrical and constructed. They referenced films with a similar look, such as Force Majeure and Still Walking, which are composed of carefully constructed, often locked off shots with multiple characters. We wanted to create a mise-en-scene which felt staged to emphasize the idea that these characters are just performing a version of themselves. The characters are often framed in deliberate, static compositions, so it feels like they're trapped. We also use these composed group shots to allow family dynamics to play out simultaneously with a sense of organized chaos, since they each have their own way of seeing and doing things. Let's take a look now at specific examples to see how a simple, wider, static, deliberately composed frame visually represented the story on screen. A great example of simple, effective framing can be found in this long take. In the scene, a new couple who are getting married as an excuse for the family to gather to see Nai Nai awkwardly pose for engagement photos. Using excessive headroom increases the feeling of awkward clumsiness of the young couple in a comedic way. Solano uses the idea of a frame within a frame. An over-the-top, fluffy, pink heart frames the couple. The ironic use of this heart as a framing mechanism, as the couple actually don't appear to be in love or even know each other much at all, adds to the comedy of the scene. The camera then dollies back and creates a visual contrast between the characters in the foreground and the background, showing the family as a group, but also as individuals. This is done through lighting contrast and through placing the characters on different planes of the thirds. Nai Nai and Billy, the focus of the scene closest to camera, are given breathing room between each other, but the awkward, out of focus action in the background disrupts the intimacy of the foreground conversation until eventually the ironic heart comes tumbling down. Next we have a frame which emphasizes the performative, stage framing which mimics the performance of the family, hiding the grandmother's sickness from her. This composition is built around the rule of thirds and utilizes the width of the 2.35 to 1 aspect ratio. The horizon lines up with the upper horizontal third. The characters at the bottom are placed on either side of the intersecting bottom third lines. Billy covers the left third segment, while the doctor is placed in the middle third. The third on the right leaves negative space to balance the busyness of the rest of the frame. The shot is front on and static, which makes it seem more staged and performed, like the performed actions of the characters on screen who are lying to Nai Nai. Once again the family is shown as a group of individuals, yet the camera remains closest to Billy, our protagonist. Finally, this shot of the family returning after a party uses many of the aforementioned compositional rules. The doorways are placed on vertical thirds, and the headroom of the characters is cut off at the top third. This increased headroom also adds visually to the tension in the scene. Leading lines on the hallway walls are used to draw the eye to the central focal point of the scene, the family. Once again, it's Billy who stands out in the foreground, amongst all the family members. Although I described the visual style of the farewell as simple, clean, and minimal, this by no means detracts from the complexity of the skill and thought behind achieving this style. Like any well-shot film, the frames in the farewell are not merely pretty and beautifully composed. More importantly than that, they serve to enhance the story through a very deliberate photographic language which twists and influences the audience's subconscious feelings. Through creating a visual perspective which treats the family as a landscape, adopting a wider, objective stance, and highlighting how each character is performing a role, Wang and Solano showcased exactly how important framing each and every shot can be. I hope you enjoyed this cinematography breakdown. If there are any films you'd like to see analyzed, please mention them in the comments. Until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.